proud of the football team, the way they played. You know, they hung in there, they kept fighting, and that's kind of what we do. That's what we look up to today. And, you know, we constantly preach about play every snap as hard as you can play, and uh, we'll look up to the NCAA support for us. Unfortunately, we got in overtime and found a way to make a play offensively with Trayvon and then uh, try and get in the end zone and found a way to get, to get a little pressure on that fourth down. That game's huge for us for obvious reasons. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to, number one, go to a bowl, but also gives us the opportunity to have another spring ball. And I'm excited about that. Practicing with young kids and uh, getting one. They're probably not ready to hear that right now. But, uh, we'll tell them that tomorrow. Just to kind of try to describe the whole day, the emotions of a senior day, the back and forth game, everything that went on. Well, I just, uh, you know, we got a great group of seniors, and you know, that, that, that senior group has really bought into what we're trying to get done here on the field, off the field, the work ethic, and what we ask them to do. And uh, they've been super from Benny right on down. I never had an issue with any of them. Not only are they good players, but they're great kids. And I was just so happy. It was so important to me that uh, we send those kids out the right way for the win. And uh, that's what we were able to do. And then we had my man, uh, my man Al Felix, who ran out there last. He's the toughest player I got. <laughs> You guys are probably not aware of him, but he he was a kid that he loves football. And he got to play in a high school game, like three plays. There's an article about him. He was in high school. He's been bugging me for two years to dress for a game. Guess what he did? And he got the game ball. He's Our kids love him. Uh, he's not a tougher kid out there than what he is. And I was just so happy that uh, we could get that win for him as well. Let's talk a little bit about the game our team had today. I mean, as opposed to Dominic Davis, who's a senior, throws three interceptions, our team goes out, two touchdowns, no interceptions. No doubt. I thought, I thought Cato played extremely well. And uh, I think he had 341 yards, but the key was he had no, he had no, no, no turnovers. And that's, that's huge. And, uh, you know, that kid, is a, for a true freshman to come in here, and, and he won four games. How about this? He went on the road and beat Louisville. He beat a Southern Miss team in here, and he also beat the East Carolina team. So he beat three pretty daggone good football teams. He went on the road again and beat Memphis. So, you know, for a true freshman, I think that kid uh, played extremely well. But he had some friends. I thought Trayvon Band is finally starting to look like what we thought he would. Uh, he had a tremendous run there today. I thought uh, the offensive line started to grow up a little bit. And Aaron Dobson, I don't know if I've ever seen a 30 years coach to catch like that. Chuck, you may know. You watched Randy here for a couple of years, but I've never seen a catch like that. And I coached him pretty day on good. How much did this game epitomize this season looking back? I mean, it wasn't the most perfect game at times, but they found a way to get it done. They did. I mean, I think if you look at our wins, we got about six and five of them. Game like that, I mean, you know, all five of those. But you know what? That's that's the way uh, you know. That's 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 what good teams do. They find a way to win. They find a way to make a play, and they did that. And uh, you know, I'm just so proud of the team. I mean, they just kept hanging in there. And you know, at the beginning of the year, you know, we knew we had a tough schedule. We knew all that. We had to go on the road what seven times. Or we only had, had five home games. So we knew. We had, and the great thing is, guys, we ended up being able to come in here and, and we're four and one at home, and that's huge. I need to be five and zero at home, but we came here. We want to dominate. That we, our kids understand when they walk in that stadium that we lock the gates and find a way to win. And that's what they did. What the ball fakes today, the ball handling by by Cato, it's really seemed to kind of make East Carolina scramble a little bit. Well, you know, I think the uh, the one thing we're trying to do is with Cato is, you know, we're a little bit different offensively with him because we try to get more depth in the pocket and that type of thing, so we can see the field a little better. And you know, I think that first play was huge to Aaron. He made a great throw and he made a great catch. You know, we've got to get in a bit more of that play action stuff where number one, we can get him on the perimeter and get him to deep in the pocket so we can see a little bit. But I thought he played tremendously. With Wilson the Wilson fumble to follow the end zone, Doc, do you think the football gods were maybe working against you at that point? It wasn't real happy. I mean, I mean, you know, you can't turn it over, Jack. I mean, you know, if we don't turn it over there a couple of times, that game's not in overtime. You know, and, uh, you know for the most part, you know, we've done, we didn't do a pretty good job at Memphis a week ago. We, we were number one in the league in turning for margins up until last week. We've done a pretty good job of taking care of the football. And it's unacceptable. You know, the kids understand that. And, and we just can't, we can't turn it over. I think they had, what, three or, they had three or four, Chuck. I don't know what they ended up with. They had, what, they had three total, four total. You know, you can't, if you win the turnover margin, you've got a great chance to win. And they have, I think they ended up doing it. Despite those two, that's what should have Who was that for? Phil Warren guy out there making plays. You know, I, you know, I've seen him. I mean, it's a little bit of a flash at him what we saw in spring. I think he had about 13 or 14 tackles. And he's a tough young guy, as a freshman. And uh, you know, you look around at it, and he's he's starting to grow up. You know, this freshman is starting to grow up. And again, I can't emphasize enough how much these extra practices are going to help us with 
with all these young guys? Because they're going to get some work. Those guys, even the redshirt freshmen and the offensive line that aren't playing and all those guys, it's going to be just playing ball for those guys. Take me through this sequence, uh, sequence really quick. ECU scores. Vinny gets hurt trying to block the extra point. Cato gets sacked on the next offensive play and comes up hobbling. What do you say to the guys before overtime? The winning game. <laughs> uh, we win. I mean, you know, you don't say a whole lot at that point. I mean, I thought, I thought us taking the and of course, if you win the toss, you like to play defense. You know, once you get into it, unfortunately, we didn't. And then their offense, they went in, they responded, they scored, and the only thing I told the defense get when they just go find go win the game. Go win the game. They did. Coach, as a program, how big was this win? Since joining the conference, it's kind of been East Carolina, Southern Miss, UCF, kind of been bugaboos. Two and one against them this year. I might be wrong. I think that's the first time Marshall's had a winning record against those three since they joined. <coughs> Just trust me, you know, these guys can probably tell you that. I don't know. That. All I do know, this is the first time in the history that we've been in the conference had a winning record. And I think I know we're five and three in the conference. So I think it's huge. So, I mean, to my mind, we're taking a step forward. I think the other thing that's important, Southern Miss and East Carolina took us to the woodshed a year ago. I mean, they did, they did we didn't play with, you know, they, they beat us, beat us good. And I think to be able to come back in one year and beat both Southern Miss and East Carolina and, uh, and beat them, and that tells us, tells me is that, that we're going in the right direction and we're getting back as a team. Now that you're bowl eligible, would you feel like you should get an invitation to bowl and send you bowl would you like to go? Yeah, we better get an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what, um, and that take care, Mike will take care of that. I mean, our conference has X number of bowls. I know we're eligible, and uh, we'll go. We'll go somewhere. Did you kind of see Trayvon's health getting better and thus Kind of move that game plan more toward him. Today. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, and everybody kept, you know, and everybody all along, we just kept saying, "What's wrong with Trayvon? Because he wasn't healthy. I mean, he just wasn't, he wasn't able to run. He was he's had nagging deals and Tron. Had that on Tron. I mean, he's had, he's got some major deals he's dealt with. Those two kids have, have played through that all year long, and uh, it's going to be nice to get them healthy, you know, for a couple of weeks here and get them going to whatever bowl we're going to, and uh, have a healthy couple of tailbacks. I love those two guys. Is the catch in the corner of the end zone an option, a technique of, that you personally taught him? <laughs> <laughs> we work every day on that practice. <laughs> uh, I just knew that that's just a guy given ability to take it over and uh, wild wood catch. Try to be on sports center. Coach, you talked about the difference last year this year against East Carolina. Five and seven last year, six and six this year. Still, it seems like much more progress because of one game, one loss here. Can you talk about the progress? How much you have improved since you won your Yeah, I think I think you're I mean, you know, and, and we are you know we're eligible, we have one in that, in that game, but I think there's been a lot more progress than even what the record shows. And uh, I mean just these kids, you know, I can see us growing up you know, defensively and uh, you know, I thought our defense, you know, the one thing we had to do was tackle well and they did that. You know, I think in, in the end of the day we knew that Dominic Davis was gonna complete some passes, but we got him on the ground. I didn't see a lot of missed tackles. And that was the important thing is make him make him go the distance of the field. You know what? He ended up turning it over a couple of times. We got it back and we were able to win the game. There's no doubt in my mind that we've made significant progress. No, we're not where we want to be. You know, our goal is always going to be to win a conference championship. And we're not there yet. We didn't do it this year because evidently I guess Southern Miss beat uh, Memphis. Is that correct? So we're not going to get a chance to play for it. But uh, I think we're going to get closer and then we will be satisfied with the championship game. Is this a career builder for Florida? Well, I think I think it's going to help with confidence. I think it's going to help with the uh, You know, I'm not only Cato, but, uh, you know, their entire football team. They've got a lot of young kids. And, you know, Gerald Roberts out there at corner. You mentioned Joel Horn. You mentioned Jermaine Holmes. <coughs> you know, we've got a lot of young kids that are you know, getting a lot of playing time out there. You know, Trayvon's growing up. He's a freshman. You know, Tron's a sophomore. You know, the center's a freshman. Jasper's. So, you know, there's a lot of young kids. It's going to give us a lot of confidence. It just those extra days of practice.